Hello, so I'm Eric Strong. I'm a uh, physician and educator from Stanford University, and I'm here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in front of the Franklin Institute, one of America's oldest science museums. And this place holds some special personal significance because during an elementary school trip, uh, it was the first time, visiting here was the first time that I uh, became interested in the human body and by extension interested in medicine. And you might ask, what is it here? What do they have that triggered that interest? Well, they have the world's largest heart. So large, you can actually walk through it. All right, so the giant heart is not a literal heart, but it is a 40 to one model um, that is relatively anatomically correct. And uh, it was originally opened in 1953 when it was called the Engine of Life. And it was intended to be a temporary exhibit, only for uh, six months. But it was so popular with the public that the museum decided to make it permanent. And it's since become uh, sort of a fixture, uh, of, of sort of an iconic fixture of this museum. And one of, uh, one of the rites of passage for pretty much any school child who grows up in the city uh, has to walk through the heart at some point in time. So let's take a look inside. All right, so we're going around the back of the heart. In real life, you do not have a big space here, but I guess you can imagine this is like the pericardial sac or something. Yeah. Ducking down under some great vessels. And we're entering here via the sort of a branch of the inferior vena cava into the right atrium. Got a right atrium here, got a superior vena cava that brings blood back from the head and the arms. And this, uh, this model even has the conduction system indicated here. This is the AV node, the SA node. This is the source of that heartbeat, which is sort of not really uh, accurate, but I think the SA node is supposed to be labeled at the moment for some reason. All right, now we're passing through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle, which you can identify because you got these trabeculations uh, on, the, on the wall. And we have these stairs here, which take us into the right ventricular outflow track. And we're passing through the pulmonary valve, one of the two semi-lunar valves of the heart. And we're now on the main pulmonary artery. And we're gonna head over here to the left lung. And the left lung, of course, is where we, uh, or not the left, but the lungs in general is, of course, where the deoxygenated blood picks up oxygen. And these are here showing the capillaries on the walls here, uh, the capillaries and running past the alveoli where the gas is exchanged and carbon dioxide is offloaded and oxygen is brought in. Now we're leaving the lungs, going back into the heart, be one of the pulmonary veins, one of the four pulmonary veins. And now we're heading down back into the left atrium, or back into the heart via the left atrium. Uh, we have the mitral valve here. And now we're in our left ventricle. Uh, this is kind of always bothered me. This feels like it's supposed to be like the moderator band uh, right here, which is actually in the right ventricle, not the left. But uh, that, aside that, one, that one little point here, uh, well, we'll cut them some slack. Uh, then we have the aortic valve, and we leave the heart via the aortic valve, and we go up the aortic arch. And now we have oxygenated blood traveling to the rest of the body. And we are back down and out. So that's the Franklin Institute's giant heart. I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the view and the tour. Um, this is a really great museum. So if you're ever in Philadelphia, I recommend coming by. There's exhibits, uh, other exhibits on the human body. There's some on aviation, some on uh, electricity, astronomy, um, the physics of sports, uh, all kinds of great things. So I hope you check it out.